Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. Uh, I'm Marcus Curtis, been breeding Neapolitan Mastiffs for 17 years. I breed them, show them, own them. Well, for me, Neapolitans, and I'm biased, but they're the pet to have. Uh, the reason why I love them so much is because they're incredible to see. They look like a piece of history when you see them. They're like a prehistoric animal. Um, but more importantly, they're a great companion. They're uh, low energy and they guard well. Uh, having a family and children, they've been excellent because uh, they love them, they're loyal, they're friendly to the entire family, and yet if intruders come up or people they don't know, they're quick to guard and protect, and for that I love them. Well, the advantage to having a Neapolitan Mastiff indoor as opposed to pretty much any guard dog is that they are a low-level dog, and they don't require a lot of energy. They were bred historically as what they call, quote, close quarter guardians, and so for that, uh, they're perfect for being indoors. So if uh, a person, say a woman and child, are at home at night and the Neapolitan Mastiff is indoors, they're great at uh, intimidating somebody through their bark through the door if they come up to the door. Um, and they're, they're really good protectors. Uh, it's innate in their character. And at the same time, you don't have to worry about them jumping on all the furniture, uh, damaging everything. Um, high energy running everywhere, chasing everything. They're not like that. They're very loyal, a very mellow dog. So for that, they are uh, great for indoors and outdoors. Outdoor guardian, they're the same thing. Close quarter guardian. Uh, so they don't require a lot of land, contrary to what uh, people believe. Um, they are different than the Connie Corso. They are a heavy, broad, massive bone dog and they don't require a lot of energy. In fact, you couldn't take them on long jogs, stuff like that. Uh, they're literally uh, uh, dogs that require uh, attention and um, they like to stay around their owners, protect them, stay around them, and that's pretty much what they were built for and that's pretty consistent with what they are today. The Neapolitan Mastiff is pretty much uh, good for the whole family. They are a pack guardian, which means they will protect anybody in their family. They're not a one owner dog. Um, that being said, uh, you still want to be careful anytime you have a large breed dog around uh, small children, uh, not because they're going to be aggressive and hurt them, but by their sheer size and volume. If you have a two-year-old that's petting them and they go to play with them, they can easily knock them down, bump them into something. So if you have them around uh, young ones, you want to have them supervised, but uh, they can be around anybody because they're, like I said, they're uh, very loving very protective and they're a mellow dog so uh, especially as they get older um, they're really low-key and, and that's what I love about them the most. They pretty much can be in any living space they can be an apartment they could be in a mansion they could be in pretty much any living quarters because at the same time being a close quarter guardian they don't require a lot of uh, space but they are large dogs so if you have um, walking areas or hallways I wouldn't recommend having stuff set up with a bunch of fragile pictures or crystal or something like that. Um, the Probably the biggest thing with Neapolitan Mastiffs being large is they can they have a huge mouth and if you have small toys or something like that they would they're like a kid they will chew on them and, and they can't eat them and that could be a huge danger to them. So probably the key thing indoors uh, Neapolitan proofing so to speak is you want to have all small items that they could consume up and out of the way, kind of like a toddler. Um, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. It's just a small fragile items and edible items are the things that you want to keep away from them. Yeah, um, contrary to what people think with uh, the Neapolitan Massives, that they're big droolers and that's all they do and that'd be a challenge having them inside. Actually, they aren't. Um, they generally will drool when they eat or drink water, eat food. Um, or if they're extremely hot, but being indoors, you know, they're usually cool like a person would be. So those are the key times is uh, if you just wipe their mouth after they eat or drink water, uh, drool really isn't an issue with them, contrary to what the thoughts are. Obedience. Obedience is key with Neapolitan Mastiffs because you're dealing with a large animal and you want to start from a young age. So if somebody's 
uh, has a pet, the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to be really good with obedience. Um, sit, stay, lay. You want to have their mind stimulated and understanding what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do, because um, that way when they're in the property, they know what to do and they listen to you. If there's they pick something up and they're chewing, you don't want them to swallow, you can tell them to stop, stuff like that. Uh, Neapolitan masters are very stubborn. Um, so definitely when um, thinking about having your Neapolitan master live indoors, it is key to have them uh, well trained. Um, that's probably the biggest rules uh, for them and uh, socialization is key because they're guardians. And so unless you tell them uh, what is good, what is bad, they, they'll be protective against anybody that comes up. So whether it's uh, the grandfather, grandmother, a male person, they don't know any different. They just know this is my family I have to protect. So that's probably the biggest thing is obedience and socialization are key with them. Okay, so with obedience, you want the, your Neapolitan Mastiff to understand when things are good, when things are bad. You want to have a relationship with them to where they understand uh, what's good, what's bad. Um, so those are, so to speak, rules. That's an understanding. So, so socialization is completely different. They need to be able to know when to interact, how to interact. That could be with uh, other dogs, cats, uh, especially people. Um, if they know all the people in the household and they understand the pecking order, which is the family, that's key for them young, uh, growing and maturing is knowing um, who has the pecking order, so that's key. That's socialization with the family. Socialization with people outside would be when it's okay. Uh, so if somebody comes in, uh, maybe it's a cousin, uncle, uh, family friend or whatnot, um, you have to have the discipline of saying this is okay, introduce them, and they have to know that it's okay. And so it's an uh, incorporation of both the training and the socialization, seeing other people, knowing it's okay, when it's okay for people to come in, and then knowing when it's a danger. So if somebody comes to the door and the person, you say, I don't know who this is, they can sense that, and you're not giving them a command that this is okay, then they know that something's different. It's bred into them, it's innate in their character to be guardians. So anytime anybody, no matter what you do, no matter what your commands are, no matter what the obedience is or the socialization, if somebody that they smell is different, unfamiliar to them, whether you react or not, they're always going to be alert. They're always going to get into a posture. They're always going to get in between you and the, the potential intruder or maybe the family member. They're not necessarily going to go attack them, but they just will do that automatically. So there's um, as time goes by and as the Neapolitan Mastiff matures from uh, being a young puppy to an adult, uh, they do pick up on the nuances and emotions of their uh, family members. Neos being the loving, caring dogs that they are and being loyal, they do pick up on that. They can sense that and I think that's important, um, but it's not necessarily comes through training. It's just uh, it's being family and living with them and seeing them every day. You pick up on stuff they do, they pick up on stuff. And they're very intelligent dogs and, they, uh, and that's pretty much why I love them. Rules are important uh, when it comes to people more than the dog. I know that sounds funny, but it, it really is because the dogs being around you, they are a low key, low level dog, not overly aggressive. They will get in between you. They do know kind of when to protect and stuff like that. Uh, people, however, they are the ones that actually need more guidance because a lot of people will come, they don't think any different, they're just gonna walk onto your yard and especially if they're a friend, you know, they just think, oh, no big deal, I'll just come in. Now, that could be dangerous and that's important because if a Neapolitan Mastiff is on your property and you're not there and somebody comes in that's not supposed to be there, um, that could be bad because they are protecting their property and rightfully so, that's their, that's their job. So I generally tell people when you come to my home, always knock. Don't just walk onto the property. Make sure that I introduce you to them. And once I do, you're going to be fine. Uh, so rules for uh, people that aren't familiar with Neapolitan Mastiffs is really important um, because it could be the difference of something that's awesome 
and rewarding and they see your dog and the dog's loving and everything it's a maybe it's a family function and everything could be smooth or it could be a, a complete disaster if somebody just all of a sudden hasn't seen you for a long time comes in your backyard and runs up to give you a hug <laughs> that, that wouldn't be good because the neo is going to do something about that for sure uh, so that is key the other thing too is a uh, little children need to know just like with anything that you need to be introduced to first. Let them know who you are because the dog's going to want to play and stuff like that. So just kind of giving some ground rules of how uh, humans should interact with uh, Neapolitan Mastiffs. That's probably bigger than the other way around. The Neapolitan Mastiffs, they are a close quarter guardian and they're low drive. So they do not require and shouldn't have a lot of exercise. Uh, walking is good for them. It's good for them. They do need exercise. Uh, it's probably what's best for them is the companionship, the stimulation of you interacting with them and doing something with them. I think that's key, building a, a bond with them. Um, but as far as uh, going for jogs, runs, sprints, or riding a bike and taking them with you, uh, yeah, that, that's not going to work out very well because they're a heavy, massive built dog with uh, large uh, thorax. Um, heavy rear and bone and that stuff slows them down it's kind of like telling a wrestler uh, pro wrestler let's go for a sprint it's not going to work well the biggest thing with the Neapolitan Mastiffs um, as far as pros and cons I would say that when you're thinking about having them indoors is there are definitely more pros and advantages to having them indoors versus outdoors the companionship part of them is built in with them they're very loving and loyal so having them inside is really good for them stimulation and and I think their health and longevity and again they're, they're low energy so uh, having them inside, you don't have to worry about them uh, destroying couches or uh, destroying everything and running around high energy and digging and getting into the drywall. Um, but that being said, probably one of the drawbacks to a Neapolitan Mastiff is they are massive and you do have to uh, be very careful about uh, Neapolitan proofing or child proofing for small stuff because they will eat it. Um, fragile small items, knickknacks and stuff like that you probably can't have because the size of them, even though they're not deliberately knocking them down, they're going to bump into them. Their tail may hit it and knock it down. So that'd be uh, some of the few drawbacks to it. But overall, uh, I think they're perfect for an indoor dog. They're probably one of the best large breed dogs you could have inside. The Neapolitan Mastiffs, um, you have to be very careful and socialize them with other animals being indoors. They are an alpha dog. Uh, generally speaking though, that is same sex, same breed. So if you have uh, two males, for instance, uh, you probably cannot have them indoors. One, yes. A two, no. Um, as far as if you have a cat or you have a smaller animal, smaller dog, if they're socialized and they know the rules, actually they get along quite well. Um, the only drawbacks, like I said, with Neapolitan Mastiffs is animal aggression, same sex because they are an alpha dog. For people that are uh, thinking about a Neapolitan Mastiff but want to have them indoors or considering having them indoors, um, I would highly recommend them because um, they're loving, they're loyal, and uh, pretty much as I'd mentioned throughout that um, being involved in the breed for 17 years, you pretty much know all the pros and cons of Neapolitan Mastiffs. And uh, most of my clients do have them indoors and uh, it's been uh, delightful for them because of the emotional part of it. Um, it's been rewarding for the protection part of it, the safety part of it, and then also the fact that they can have them inside and they don't have to worry about uh, damage control. Um, so of all the other breeds out there, I'm sure there are some that uh, fit the bill for having them indoors, but for the large breed dog, uh, Neapolitan Mastiff would be excellent for it. Um, there's a lot of history behind it. And if there's uh, any breed that was bred for close quarter guardian, as they're uh, termed, uh, they are the ones. So I highly recommend them.